In 2015, I made a spur-of-the-moment decision to move into a condo less than half the size of my home. How do you downsize and not lose a sense of style? Let me tell you my story. I'm Doug Walker, and this is Roominess. Roominess brings you straightforward steps to an inviting home. Click the subscribe button for more bite-sized decor advice. You can find freebies, ebooks, and newsletters over on my website. At the end of the video, I'll have bonus tips on storage solutions for small spaces. Six years ago, I decided to sell my 2,400 square foot ranch home in the suburbs and move into town. When I walked through this 1,100 square foot condo, I had already decided against it. I estimated my minimum size was 1,500 square feet and not a hair less. Hair. Funny. Most of the condo's condition did nothing to help either. The kitchen was, well, gross. The bathroom was a case study in wasted space and poor finish decisions. And the bedroom loft, with its small closet and three half walls, had no place for a headboard to go. One of the half walls looked over into the bathroom, of all things. I mentioned in a previous video that the big cube of the main living area was an incredibly cool space. The funny part is, the blinds weren't even open the first time I visited. I had no idea how great the view was. But even in the one good room, a big blank wall needed something to compete with the giant windows. A television just wouldn't cut it. Then my realtor made one offhanded remark. Well, you could build up the wall between the bedroom and the bathroom and have a place to put a bed. Somehow, that's all it took. The more I thought about this condo, the more possibilities I could see of how this ugly duckling space could work for me. By the end of the day, I was drawing a floor plan of the condo. When I draw the floor plan of a house, it means I love it and I want to buy it. I knew it would be a gut and remodel from the get-go, and that made me completely panic. Before I made an offer, I had to figure out if I could fit into 1,100 square feet. Would my traditional furnishings work with an industrial loft space? And, oh by the way, I refused to compromise on having a piano. And what if it didn't all fit? Would I look like an antique store hoarder? Probably. I could potentially spend thousands of dollars and end up moving again. Now, to be honest, I was kind of excited at the idea of mixing my traditional furniture with a loft space. Designers have been mixing traditional furnishings with raw industrial spaces for decades. And I knew my fall color palette would work really well with exposed brick. But looking like an antique store was still a danger. What if I really didn't have room for all my stuff? Now, I can hear what some of you are thinking. Doug, that's what rental storage is for. My personal philosophy just doesn't run that way. The things I keep in my life are things I want to live with, not things I want to visit in a cinder block mausoleum of unwanted decor items. If I couldn't fit the family china into the condo, then I'd have to give up the family china. The real estate seller's market was already on, so I had to make a decision fast. I started crunching numbers to see if I could fit my life, a collection of Woodhouse novels, and a grand piano into 1,100 square feet. That meant quite literally measuring everything I owned. You what? I decided what furniture was going with me and measured it. Then I set about measuring my clothes, kitchen, and bookshelf space. You measured your clothes. In that case, not each item. I measured in shelf feet for my storage space. If I have three shelves in the kitchen, each two feet wide and full of dishes, the total measurement is six shelf feet. I measured my closet rod lengths and shelves. I measured bookshelves the same way. A five shelf bookshelf with three foot shelves is 15 shelf feet. Why was I so uptight about all this? Because I didn't want to run into a very common issue I see in decor. Not enough planned storage. In modern America, we accumulate stuff. And when stuff overflows the storage capacity of the house, we buy a piece of storage furniture. It's easy to underestimate the amount of storage we need and not leave room for the future. We end up buying multiple small storage pieces that don't coordinate with each other or the overall decor scheme. 
The storage problem can be compounded by locating our storage where it isn't convenient for using the thing that we've stored. That's a recipe for leaving things out since they're difficult to put away. In the condo, I wanted to make sure storage was as near as possible to the place I wanted to use it. Sheet music near the piano. DVDs near the TV, China near the dining table, desk supplies near to the computer, and so on. I ended up planning for a large amount of book, media, decor, china, and even wine storage in the main living area. You've probably seen it in other videos since it's hard to miss. I planned the top shelf storage in the walk-in closet for archived paperwork, luggage, and other infrequently accessed items. I also planned not to use all the storage space. For instance, I only planned on using about one-third of the space that's underneath the stairs. Planning not to use all of my space helped me feel like my entire life wouldn't be shoehorned into this not-quite-tiny house. And if you're enjoying this video, click the like button so you can help more people find roominess. Dislike. 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 I wrote down all my storage needs and measurements in a list. Then I transferred that to a spreadsheet so I wouldn't miss anything. Once I worked through all the higher math, I had sketches and numbers to give me confidence that I could fit comfortably into 1,100 square feet without having to climb over the piano to get into the kitchen. And since I planned for more storage than I need, all my decor has room to breathe rather than being crammed together. Along the way, I learned new ways to think about storage and how to use it to maximize my space. So the move was on, but that just created more panic. With only one bathroom, I had to gut and remodel it before I moved in. And oh, I'd never designed a bathroom before. So we'll talk about that next episode. Here are some bonus tips on storage. We've talked in this video and others about matching your storage to your needs. Now I have used customized storage in a couple of instances, but I've also simply reused existing pieces and matched those to my storage needs as well. You can do the same. I used the mechanical area under my stairs for seasonal storage. I wanted something regularly used and utilitarian by the door. It turned out that my old rolling file cabinet was a good place to store tools. I don't keep that many of them. It rolls out from under the stairs when I need to access the rest of the space. In my utility closet, I wanted more shelving to store cleaning supplies. It turned out that the outdoor side tables from my previous house stacked up to make a usable storage solution in this hidden spot. This next video is all about choosing and arranging storage pieces. You should watch. It's short. I'll see you there.